Hello, welcome to AI Medical School. In this video, we are going to talk about dexamethasin drug. And we will try to know, does dexamethasin work against COVID-19? But before we start, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, so subscribe to it and like the video. So let's start. Table of Objectives. Overview. Indications. Side Effects. Warnings. Dosage. And Brands. Let's start with an overview. Dexamethasin is a corticosteroid. It reduces swelling and inflammation. Dexamethasin is used in different conditions such as skin diseases, allergic conditions, breathing problems like pneumonia, and it was tested in hospitalized patients with COVID-19 in the United Kingdom's National Clinical Trial Recovery and was found to have benefits for critically ill patients. I will drop the link in the description box so you can know further about it. Come back to dexamethasin usage in different conditions like cancer, blood disorders, eye diseases and arthritis. Dexamethasin is also used to treat nausea and vomiting produced by cancer chemotherapy. Now, indications. Dexamethasin is primarily indicated in conditions like adrenocortical insufficiency, anorexia in palliative care, brain tumors, cerebral edema, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, dyspnea, dyspnea in palliative care, headache due to raised intracranial pressure in palliative care, nausea and vomiting, pain due to nerve compression in palliative care, palliative surgery, raised intracranial pressure, respiratory distress syndrome, shock, suppression of inflammatory and allergic disorders, and can also be given in adjunctive therapy as an alternative drug of choice in asthma, blood disorders, connective tissue diseases, GI diseases, liver diseases, malignancy, ocular diseases, osteoarthritis of superficial joints, osteoarthritis, and renal diseases. Contraindication. Dexamethasin is contraindicated in conditions like diabetes mellitus, hypertension, psychosis, osteoporosis, GI ulceration, infections, and renal insufficiency. Side effects of dexamethasin drug. The severe or irreversible adverse effects of dexamethasin, which give rise to further complications include glaucoma, peptic ulceration, myopathy, osteoporosis, posterior subcapsular cataract, growth retardation, aseptic bone necrosis, ocular hypertension, subcapsular cataract, pancreatic disturbance, Cushing features, edema, retinal detachment, moon face, truncal obesity, negative calcium balance. Dexamethasin produces potentially life-threatening effects which include collapse. Suppression of the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, which are responsible for the discontinuation of dexamethasin therapy. The symptomatic adverse reactions produced by dexamethasin are more or less tolerable, and if they become severe, they can be treated symptomatically. These include nausea, vomiting, insomnia, nervousness, nocturia, increased appetite, obesity, facial rounding the fragility of the skin, euphoria, glucose intolerance, adrenal suppression, protein catabolism, and lipid metabolism. Warnings. Dexamethasin should be used with caution in patients with active tuberculosis infection of the respiratory tract, or an untreated fungal, bacterial or systemic viral infections. Corticosteroids should only be used systemically with great caution in the presence of congestive heart failure, recent myocardial infarction, hypertension, diabetes mellitus, epilepsy, glaucoma, hypothyroidism, liver failure, osteoporosis, peptic ulceration or renal impairment. Children may be at increased risk of some adverse effects, corticosteroid cause growth retardation and prolonged use is rarely justified. Passive immunization is recommended to non-immune patients who do come in contact with chickenpox or measles. Live vaccine should not be given to patients 
receiving high-dose systemic corticosteroid therapy, nor for at least three months afterwards, killed vaccine or toxoids may be given, although the response may be attenuated. During prolonged treatment with corticosteroids, patients should be examined regularly. Sodium intake may need to be reduced, and calcium and a potassium supplement may be necessary. The patient should carry cards given full details of their corticosteroid therapy. Avoid use during pregnancy. Use nasal steroids with caution until healing has occurred. Dose adjustment required in a patient with renal. High-risk groups. The drug should not be given to pediatrics. Pregnant mothers. Cardiac or hypertensive patients. Geriatrics. And neonates. If prescribing authority justifies the benefits of the drug against a possible damages he or she should reevaluate them and consult the reference material and previous studies. Adult dose 0.1%. Single dose 0.1 mg. Frequency as recommended. Root ophthalmic. As required. To be given as drops. Dose 0.5 to 10 mg. Single dose 5.2 mg. Frequency 24 hourly. Root dot dose 0.5 to 24 mg. Single dose 12 mg. Frequency as recommended. Root IV, IM. Once in weeks. Neonatal dose 0.2 mg per kilograms. Single dose 0.2. Frequency 8 hourly. Root intramuscular. Dose 0.2 mg per kilogram single dose 0.2 frequency 8 hourly. Root intravenous. Dose 0.2 mg per kilogram. Single dose 0.2. Frequency 8 hourly. Root oral. Pediatric dose 0.01 to 0.1 mg per kilogram. Single dose 0.055. Frequency 24 hourly. Root oral. Daily. Dose 1%. Single dose 1 mg. Frequency 6 hourly. Root ophthalmic. 1 to 2 drops. Dose 20.8 mg single dose 21. Frequency as recommended. Root IV. Initial dose. The follow-up is the same this dose is for children below 35 kg. Dose 20.8 mg. Single dose 21. Frequency 6 hourly. Root intravenous. Initial dose followed by 3.3 mg to late day then by daily reduction of 1.7 mg. For 35 kg and over. Now, brands. Dyxawell. Daxamex. And, Daxanol. Thanks for watching, if you found this video helpful, so subscribe to the channel and like the video.